Hey, what's happening? So, continuing on. Uh, as I post these videos, I'll have to make clarifications because you don't want things to be misconstrued or words taken out of context. Um, and uh, so, like I said, when when Tat Money and her cousin Iris came to my apartment and hung out, she had asked if I had a friend. I invited my friend Saul and. When I say he pressed up on her, not like physically pressed up on her, but he was like, hey, what's up? You know, like, hey, what's cracking? Um, and when I say she was, uh, I can't remember exactly how I worded it, but I'm not saying she was like physically or like trying to diss him or nothing like that. But she was just like, oh, yeah, let's kick it. But she had, I, even though I was there with her cousin, um, she wanted to hang out with me back then. I mean, I don't look like shit now, but back then I had some begging, you know, I had, you know, I, I had I had a little something. So, um, she had eyes for me. So when I say my friend, so, cause he's on here, of course, obviously, um, say he pressed upon her. I don't mean like, like all physical. I mean, just like, you know, that was what it was. It was her cousin asked me to bring a friend to hang out with her for maybe, maybe they hit it off, whatever. That's what it was. Um, but she, she had eyes for me so that she was just kind of just like, you know, like that. I, like I said, I didn't know until I bumped into her when I came home from um, Fort Benning, Georgia. And like I said, it was a holiday. I can't remember if it was Memorial Day or something. But me and my friends, there was a big old thing that goes on up there at La Jolla Indian Reservation. A camping thing. So a bunch of my buddies were up there. And she was up there with her squad of friends. Which is, like I said, the baby's mothers of a lot of my friends that I have. And, um... We hung out that night, and that's when she told me. She's like, yeah, I had a thing for you. That's why I was like, your friend, I, I was ignoring him because I wanted to be there with you, and you were with Iris. But and I was like, okay, all right, right. And, and like I said, we kicked it tough that whole night. We were by the fire, and and it was just, I could feel the vibe. You know, it was it was, it was was cool. Tat, Tat was a cool person. You know, we had some um, some fallouts later on, but uh, there, there was good times. So if you see me smiling, it's not out of sarcasm or anything. It's just, you know, think it back. Um, and I'm sure everybody can relate to that. There's, you know, even if bad things happen, you, you can remember there was, there was good moments in time, uh, before all the, all the, before you have to weather the tempest, there's usually, you know, some nice weather. <clears throat> and so, and like I said, the things that I'm going to say, I'm not exposing nobody for nothing. These are already crimes ain't going to be solved. You know, some of them, some of these people already done been snatched up or whatever, um, and my involvement is is through association. You know, I met a lot of people. Uh, I hung out with a, a group called the Icons. They were like graffiti, dancing, music, hip hop. Um, those were my friends. And I, I hung out with graffiti people that I knew. I was from a graffiti crew. Um, and the dynamic of San Diego, like I said, other cities have a lot of gangster stuff. San Diego has a splash of of, of, um, of gangsters, taggers, dancers, Rastafari, and you have the military there. You have all those colleges, and you got an international border, so you have that counter border cartel shit that goes on and splashes over in San Diego. So it only makes sense that the gangs that are call San Diego home are going to be the first in line or the closest to the cartel people. So that eventually led to what, like I said, back then when I knew these people, this stuff was like all unknown. Now anybody with the Netflix account or Google, you know, can look who up David Barone and Popeye, Logan Heights and the Ariano Felix. But normally you ask people, but who's the Ariano? What? Felix? Who? What? You know, people know a lot about Chapo Guzman right now because he's in the news. And, um, but back then, at least in San Diego, it was the Arianos who were feared. And I mean, I'm not saying they still don't got no clout. I mean, you saw what just happened over the holiday in, um, in Ensenada, that massacre that happened. I know from what I was told, they were on the receiving end. And um, there's that struggle for power, but they had a lot of power back then. So I'm talking about like in the height of their um, of their reign. I would say, you know, when all this stuff was going on, 80s, 90s. And David Barone, I never met him, didn't know Popeye, nothing like that. His favorite niece was who I met. And I met her as a result of being married to Tap Money. And um, 
that group of friends. My friends were with, had children with their friends, and we all used to go clubbing in TJ. If you're in San Diego, you go to TJ, you go to Rosarito, you go to Ensenada. It's just, it's, it is where everybody goes, the Marines, the Navy, like, you know, people from L.A., San Bernardino, Orange County, everybody's trying to get down to TJ, TJ nights, and then people fighting out on the revolution, riots and stuff, and crazy, oh, it just fun mixed with chaos and mayhem, and, and relationships are established, both negative and positive, but um, no joke, you could literally just be going to, like, junior high, high school, and have just a friend that's not involved in nothing and then down the road not too long thereafter bump into them and they're just splashed you know like hmm, you know what happened to you and um sometimes they may have a relative or they may have a friend a neighbor a cousin they may have a lot of family because because going into tj is not i mean it's like a, it's a five ten minute endeavor for some people you walk in the it's like boom you drive down this to the dro san isidro and, you, and boom you're into tj it's like it's that close you can see from chula vista and south Bay. you can see mexico you can see the big old flag and and aguas caliente and everything that i'm talking about um you can see that from where we lived and so it's that close and um so sometimes people will go down there to visit relatives or have relatives that live down there and somehow that would pull them in. And so a lot of people aren't necessarily born and raised and bred into it. Some people just get washed in. There's a lot of money and power and influence and, and status that comes along with this. So a lot of people want to be seen or known or like they want people to know that like, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm with, I'm with, I'm with, but that, like I said, that has some consequences sometimes or repercussions. And unfortunately, there's a lot of glorification that goes on without truly explaining the consequence. Because I'm going to walk you guys through a lot of murders, a lot of murders, not just like one or two or nothing like that. And these are people that I knew um, and the unfortunate circumstances related to their passing and how it impacted their family and it, it devastated some of their families like um, in a horrible way, you know, um, so. There's no glorification here. I'm not here for that. Um, and this story is going to trip you out because this has to do with Amsterdam. You know, the army, San Diego, just crazy freaking divorce and all, all kinds of crazy. Um, how you say? Tangents. Um, so. I just want to clarify when I was talking about my buddy, Saul, like I said, he came over. I didn't want nobody to misconstrue like he was trying to forcibly, you know, bump up on bump up on tap money or nothing. That, it wasn't like that. Um, so let me see. Where did I leave off in 2002? Living down there. Met Tony and Lorena. Oops. Low. Um, well, I guess I can say her first name because it's like not like I'm saying you know, her last name or anything. Cause I, yeah, I don't want to cast no, no harm on her as far as she, I don't, she could be out there. Hey, low. If you're out there, love you sis, man. She was me and her were cool as a fan. She loved me. Um, her, her, her man, husband loved me. Cause I was a good dude. I mean, he kind of got himself caught up in the mix and I, I seen a lot of crazy stuff. Um, that she was not happy about the circumstances that he kind of put her into. Um, she was vocal about it and I ended up going, to Europe um, as a result. And like I said, I've got to get into all that crazy story because it's, it's, it's an interesting one. But, um, again, consequences and repercussions, cause and effect. Um, but so I don't want her to be out there living a normal life. And then if, I mean, I don't, like I said, I don't want this all mainstream or whatever. I'm just here to tell the, tell the narrative. So, you know, who knows? You, today's not promised. I mean, tomorrow's not promised to nobody. Neither is the rest of today. You could walk outside your house and get hit by a car, have a heart attack, uh, an aneurysm. I've had friends that they had an aneurysm right in front of their family. People have seizures. It's cra I've seen crazy stuff. So tell your story before you go. Um, yeah. So anywho. Um, so Tony and Lowe. My wife, when I was deployed with 2-2 Infantry, uh, we were in Kosovo, we were in the Balkans, we were in um, Muchibaba, Jelani. Um, my wife was staying with them in Rosarito. And I, like I said, I don't know what y'all know or you know that 
if there's a woman who's got clout and power, usually they'll try to put a man close by her and then let him rise to power through her coattails, I guess you would say. Uh, oh, yeah, that's what I had said before, that she, he was on, on her coattails. My friend said, oh, I don't mean like all up on her coattails, but he was like, hey, what's up? You know, like, hey, you're beautiful. Cause she's beautiful. She still is beautiful. And um, that's what I meant. So anyhow, um, she was staying with Tony and Lowe down there. And like I said, we established a, a friendship, a relationship, and um, something happened in Bonita, California, and they had came to me for like help, you know. I was just I was over in Logan Heights hanging out with the hip hop guys. They were making music, you know, making beats on the thing, and um, and uh, they hit me up like, "Hey, something really bad happened." I was like, "Oh man, Whew. oh man, let me see what I can do." And um, I I got in the truck, went down there, put on like a construction uniform, and went down there and kind of checked things out, and. It didn't look good. And so that's where it kind of got all funky where Tony, he wanted to be somebody and something so bad. I mean, he was just like, oh, he wanted to be so bad, you know, like, ah, oh, he wanted to be in that. And like I said, he wanted to ride the wave of her to, to like glory. And she was like, yo, I just want to be a motherfucking mom to my kids, man. To get me in no trouble, and sure enough, that fool didn't listen, and he got them in trouble. But he didn't just get them in trouble, he got her in trouble. And that's when things got really crazy. So I'll come back and tell you all about that 